Chapter 10 Mulled Wine, Bell Ringing, and Sightseeing Once again, White Foxface had gone into seclusion. Xu Feng Yan went to the center of the lake with Jiang Yi, Yu Yo Wei, and Old Huang in tow to make mulled wine while admiring the snow. A tipsy and glassy-eyed Xu Feng Yan pointed at Jiang Yi, then Yu Yu Wei, and chortled, You and you. So both of you want to kill me. Jiang Yi, take out Oracle and stab me. I'd like to see which one will win. My sturdy Wu Kui armor or your sharp dagger. Let's make a bet. You win, I die. I win, you smile for me. How about it, your royal princess of great peace? Jiang Yi narrowed her comely eyes, eager at the chance. Surname Jiang, Oracle of the Dagger, her royal princess of great peace. Yu Yu Wei's hand shook with realization, eliciting a meow out of Empress, still tucked in her arms. Xu Feng Yan bared his chest, revealing a deep blue suit of armor. Go on, stab me. Instead of stabbing him, Jiang Yi sneered. You make a losing bet. Xu Feng Yan guffawed. Ha <laughs> ha, I just escaped death. Old Huang, start rowing, we're going back. Once on the shore, Jiang Yi walked off in a huff of resentment. Soon, it was two days before New Year's Eve, now being the sixth year of Liyang Kingdom's Qingyuan era. Xu Xiao and Xu Feng Yan set forth for Mount Jiuhua of Kunzhou Province at the break of dawn, accompanied by four of Lord Xu's foster sons and 300 iron cavalrymen. Located at the peak of Mount Jiuhua was the Talantan Bell, weighing several hundred tons. When rung 108 times in a day, it signified deliverance from all 108 forms of frustration. Since the passing of his wife, Lord Xu would always pay a visit every Qingming festival, Chongyang festival, in one day before New Year's Eve to personally ring the bell twice, once each during the day and at night. This time, the foster sons accompanying him were Yuan Zhuozong, the big bear, Ye Xizhen, Yao Jian, and Chen Zhibao. Big Bear possessed superb martial prowess, and his military acumen was equally outstanding. On the other hand, the scholarly Ye Xizhen was adept at working behind the scenes, formulating strategic maneuvers and preparations. Yao Jian, having been trained in a denomination of Taoism, specialized in geomancy and terrain warfare, and Chen Zhibao, nicknamed Young Manslayer, had enough experience to make split-second assessments to affect the best outcome. The six of them spent the night in the ancient temple on the Mount Peak, while Lord Xu rang the bell for a hundred and eight times from morning till night on the day before New Year's Eve. Xu Xiao and Xu Feng Yan were standing in the Thousand Buddha Pavilion when the Grand Consul remarked quietly, After your coming-of-age ceremony, you'll be the one ringing the bell in the future. Xu Feng Yan nodded in assent. The mountain wind breezed past, driving the clouds to gather and disperse in the glow of twilight. Lord Xu reminisced, Three years ago, His Majesty had a mind to bequeath the Twelfth Princess to you. So, you'd hold the empty title of a royal husband, which boils down to being a glorified hostage. But I declined it tactfully, 
sending you off on a three-year journey instead, which finally silenced the wagging tongues in the royal court. If his majesty still insisted on pursuing the matter, he can't blame me for not honoring my duty, can he? Xu Fengyan let out a wry laugh. <laughs> well, I'm not interested in the imperial throne. Lord Xu glared at him. So you're willing to be a farthing of a royal spouse, caged peacock? Have you actually thought about commanding the military of Northern Liang in the future? Xu Fengyan answered. What do you think? Lord Xu commented. After all I've put into building our vast family fortune, don't you think you should spare a thought for my legacy? Xu Fengyan replied with some brass. Oh well, that won't be a problem. It's just a matter of squandering it. My specialty. At that moment, the Grand Consul's hunched back seemed to straighten in silent umbrage. <laughs>